Hongleong Financial Group confirmed today that it has disposed of 27 million shares or a 10.94% stake in Hongleong Capital in a bid to increase its public shareholding spread. Following the disposal, HLFG stake in HL Cap is reduced to 173.8 million shares or 70.4%. In a boss filing, HLFG said the shares were disposed via private placement but did not reveal the party or parties involved in the placement exercise. Yesterday, HL Cap told the boss that the exercise had increased its public shareholding spread to 29.6%, thus meeting the 25% minimum requirement. With this, HL Cap is set to resume trading on Friday after being suspended for over five years. HL Cap was last traded at 9 ringgit 38, giving it a market capitalization of 2.26 billion ringgit. The government will pursue an out-of-court settlement with Diamaju LTAT regarding the termination of its contract for the Klang Valley Double Tracking Project. Minister in the PM's department in charge of law, Datuk Takir Din Hassan, said in Parliament today, adding that it was discussed with the Transport Ministry last Friday. He says the government is seeking a win-win situation with the contractor and wants to avoid dragging out the matter through a tedious legal process. DML had filed a suit against the administration in September to stop the Brigata National government from terminating the contract was some 4.5 billion ringgit. It was appointed the contractor in August 2019. On August 28 this year, the MOT said it would reopen the tender for the KVDT2 project. Airlines in Malaysia could take three years to bounce back from the pandemic depending on the situation both home and abroad, according to the Ministry of Transport, Reuters reports. Earlier this week, the MOT minister had couched this timeline in the Malaysian Aviation Commission's revised projections for passenger traffic this year, where it expects passenger numbers to shrink as much as 76% to 26.6 million, compared with 109.2 million in 2019. National Carrier Malaysia Airlines and low-cost carrier the AirAsia Group have both cut staff and embarked on restructuring plans as they work to survive. Malaysia Airports Holdings Network of Airports recorded 2.6 million passengers in October, a decline of 78.1% from last year and a decrease of 25.7% from September. Unsurprisingly, MHB says the traffic in October was largely affected by the resurgence of COVID-19 cases that resulted in the reinstatement of the conditional MCO in certain areas. Domestic passengers dropped 67.4% to 2 million, while international passengers dropped 89.7% to 600,000 passengers. Even so, MHB says KLIA continues to maintain essential connectivity with 35 airlines operating to 31 destinations in 23 countries. Green Packet reported a net loss of 6.8 million for its third quarter compared with a net profit of 5.6 million the year before, partly due to higher costs. Revenue for the quarter also fell to 62.7 million from 185.6 million posted the previous year. However, on a quarter and quarter basis, its net loss had narrowed mainly due to the 14.3 million ringgit received from the settlement of exchangeable medium term notes via the transfer of Weeby Digital shares to Mobicom. On its Prospects Green Packet said it expects satisfactory performance for the current financial year despite the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The expectation is based on the group's ongoing initiatives related to LTE products and operational efficiency, among others, which have slowly started to show positive traction in its overall business. CGS CIMB Security says that banks and tourism-related stocks are its picks for the COVID-19 pandemic recovery theme after Pfizer and BioNTech announced encouraging vaccine trial results. Analysts Ivy Ng Li Fang and Nagulan Ravi wrote in a note today that this development could lead to investors switching out from COVID-19 beneficiary stocks to recovery plays on potentially higher share price upside potential. The research house says that companies like Genting, Genting Malaysia, 
Malaysia Airports Holdings, IGB REIT, IHH Healthcare and KBCH Healthcare might benefit from higher source arrivals once borders reopen. For exposure to the economic recovery post-pandemic, CGSCIMB favours the banks, having recently upgraded its call on the banking sector to overweight. Its top picks are Public Bank, Hong Leong Bank, RHB Bank and AMMB Holdings. Other potential beneficiaries include both the media and the oil and gas sectors.